All right, Vintage family, we are so excited to kick off another week together in worship. My name is Rob Wilton. I serve as the lead pastor of Vintage Church, and I want to welcome you, especially if you're a first-time guest with us. I want you to know you are our VIP. Midweek, let's give it up for our first-time guests in the house. We are so, so pumped that you have taken time out of your life to join us either out here at our midweek or online at home. I know you might be chilling in your PJs right now or at a coffee shop or watching this throughout the week. We're just pumped to, to have this moment with you, with your family, and we believe in this moment. We believe that God and His presence is here and God wants to speak to you in a special way. And so um, please reach out to us and let you let us know that you're here. You can text the word Vintage Church to 31996 today. Vintage Church, all one word combined there, to 31996. We're going to send you back some links and we're going to start having some fun together. Make sure you register. Let us know that you're with us today. Hey, wherever you're at, let's stand up. Let's get ready to worship Jesus today. He is on his throne. We love King Jesus. So let's pray, Lord, lead us now as we worship you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Do great things in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus, remind us in this time that you are the only firm foundation, the only thing that deserves our worship, the only thing that we can lean on. Remind us of that today. We love you, Jesus.
God's word is extremely clear because it says over and over that whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That's not just some sort of fun slogan to share. That's honestly what we read about in scripture. And if I could say anything about this past week and what's been going on across our country, I think what we need is Christ's example of humility. I, I wanna sing that chorus again, we exalt thee. Um, but I, I want us to listen to why we exalt thee. <laughs> so if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Church, what a time for us to rise up as the church. And in these divided times, be united in Christ. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Don't look to your own interests. Look to the interests of others. Why? I'm not even preaching yet, I'll just let you know. I'm not even preaching yet. This is, this is free of charge, this is bonus. Because of Christ. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Start singing, we exalt thee, band. Let's start singing. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, church, sing this. I know we might not be able to get unified over what's going on in this world, but we can because we stand under the name that is exalted high, that is exalted above every other name. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. You are on your king, on the throne, Lord Jesus. You are our king, Lord Jesus. And so we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We love thee. We thank thee. Come on, let's sing it. As we get ready for the word of God here in Ephesians chapter 6, I want to I wanna just pray. And, and I want to pray specifically for our country right now. I, I want to pray that what we've just read out of Philippians chapter 2, as we all are humbled before Jesus who humbled himself, 
so that we might have life. I, I wanna pray in the name of Jesus that for such a time as this, the church would rise up and humble themselves, unite and exalt the name of Jesus. So let's pray, Lord Jesus, as we get ready to jump into your word. God, we've been so thankful for what you've been doing here in this armor series. We've been equipping ourselves by putting on the armor of God. Lord, we exalt thee. And we need thee. And so Lord, would you humble us Lord, before you. And God, may these things that we read about in Philippians chapter 2. Lord, may there be a participation in the Spirit, affection, sympathy. God, may we do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Lord, may we count others more significant than ourselves. God, it starts with us. And so God, I pray that you would lead maybe those of us who this past week have not lived in such humble ways. Lord, I pray that you would in your kindness lead us to repentance. God, I pray that that repentance would lead us to confessing maybe to a brother or sister that we've sinned against. And God, in a season where there seems so much division, God, there seems so much turmoil, God, we know as great as the darkness might become in this world, you are greater. And so Lord Jesus, would you, even in this moment right now, empower your servant by the power of your Holy Spirit to lead people to you. God, would you inspire us as the church to put on our helmet of salvation today and to truly live out what it means to follow the example of your humility. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, let's open up our Bibles together to Ephesians chapter 6. I don't know right now if you're thankful or not, but I know that I'm thankful for this band that leads us week in and week out uh, under the leadership of Pastor Jake Smith and this incredible team. If you're watching online right now, hit a whole bunch of thumbs ups and hearts and, and just show a little bit of love to our vintage arts team. We're so thankful for how they lead us. We've been having a blast together in this armor series and we're gonna be looking at the fee, the fifth piece of armor, uh, we're going to consider the helmet of salvation. And so um, before you get too comfortable, maybe you're having a little praise party right there in the coffee shop or at home, let's stand again in honor of God's word. And we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17 together. Once again, uh, standing and putting on, taking up this armor of God. In verse 14, it says this, Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Those three we gave with the title, put on. Put on the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of peace. Last week, we jumped into the take up section. It says in verse 16, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation. That's where we're going to lock in here in the word. And next week, we're going to talk about and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Midweek, you came strong this week. I love the midweek family. We're having a blast. Once again, you got to join the party with us on Wednesday nights at our PGH West location. We would love to have you. All right, let's talk about the helmet 
of salvation. All these pieces of armor I love. This is another one. It's just incredible. Uh, we're going to learn a lot and hopefully be equipped with this helmet of salvation today. Remember, we're fighting God's battle with God's equipment, God's way. And God has a very specific, special plan for this helmet of salvation. In verse 17, again, it says, and take the helmet of salvation. Now, in my studies this week, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm better than Paul and I know what to do better than Paul because I know this isn't Paul. We're going to learn that even later in this message. Uh, he knows, look, nothing that he ever accomplished, even the writing of this letter to the church in Ephesians was because of him. It was because of the grace of God. So this isn't Paul. This is the Holy Spirit speaking through his servant, Paul. But this week, I kind of wondered, like, especially with how important this piece of armor is, Really, Paul? Number five? You're going to wait all the way until number five to mention the helmet of salvation? Anybody else struggling with that? Like, should we talk about salvation and maybe the helmet of salvation one? Like, first? What, why is Paul doing this? Well, I started to think about it. Think about the context of what Paul's doing here. He's writing to the church at Ephesus. Um, he's not writing to Ephesus. He's writing to the church at Ephesus, which means what? He is writing to Christians. Paul is writing to people who are already saved. He's writing to the saints. Um, it has been a given each and every week as we've talked about this, that if you want the belt of truth, you got to first know truth to live out truth. So you got to receive truth, breastplate of righteousness. You need the righteousness of God. It's assumed with all these pieces of armor, as Paul's preaching, that you already know Jesus. I pray you know Jesus. If not, would today you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? See, Paul here is writing, assuming that who's reading this are believers in Christ. And so I started to think about this. He tells them to take up. The helmet of salvation. But Pastor Rob, you told us that we couldn't lose our salvation. What, what is this piece of armor all about? Why is he telling the church at Ephesus to take up? You know what it means? It is possible to be saved, but not think saved. <laughs> it is possible to have Christ and not live for Christ. It is possible to act and have Christ and not act like Christ. It is possible to um, know Christ but not know the things of Christ. Paul here is challenging the church at Ephesus to take up the helmet of salvation. He's encouraging this church. Um, why in the world would you try and go and accomplish a bunch of things for Christ without Christ? Especially when it comes to the mind. Especially when it comes to the head. Remember when we talked about in the first piece of armor, belt of truth. Right thinking will produce right living. The head is absolutely vital to the body. Without the head, there is no possibility of the body functioning right. We have sayings all the time, right? Heads up, right? It means, look, pay attention, right? We have things like, man, hope you get a head start. It means kind of let's go. Let's get ahead of the game. How about this? I yell this to my twins all the time. Use your head. What were you thinking, right? I can't believe you did that. That's dangerous. Don't jump off the roof onto a trampoline. Broken legs are going to happen. Use your head, son, right? Or how about this? Keep your head on a swivel. Keep your head on a swivel. You all know that in warfare, right? God never says, I'm coming. Like he plans on blind side knocking you out. Um, the head is absolutely important. Once again, like we've done throughout this um, series. Let me read a little bit about the significance of the helmet here. Roman military helmets were two types, one made of leather, one made of metal. 
The helmet had a band to protect the forehead and plates for the cheeks, and then it extended down in the back to protect the neck. When the helmet was strapped in place, it exposed little besides the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. The metal helmets were heavy, and due to their weight, they were lined with a sponge or a felt in order to not just make it a little bit more comfortable, but to help carry the weight in battle. No soldier's uniform was complete without a proper helmet. Why? Because we need to protect the head from injury. When the brain is damaged, the body doesn't function. The brain is the control center for the body. The mind, listen to me, because let's get a little deeper. Let's get to some soul talk, some spiritual talk here. Right thinking produces right living. The mind is the control center for the soul. So you see somebody who maybe is living out, whose body is out of control, most likely their mind is out of control. And so we need this helmet of salvation. Now, once again, this sounds like I'm critiquing Paul. It's like, Paul, why number five? Why are you waiting until number five? I'm also going to critique a little bit the name of this piece of armor. <laughs> um, it's all the same thing, but I'm going to kind of tweak it a little bit and give us something to think about. I'd like to call this piece of armor the helmet of grace. The helmet of grace. Can I prove it to you? Um, look here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 10. You want to flip earlier in the book of Ephesians. Let me read for you. We're talking about the helmet of salvation. And then I want to talk about what this helmet of grace provides for us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, But God... Anybody thankful for that phrase right there? I mean, we were doing this, and it looked like we were screwing our lives up, but God. And I'm so thankful God keeps intervening in my life. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace. Everybody say grace. By grace, you have been saved. The helmet of salvation, the helmet of grace. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace. Everybody say grace. Grace. And kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Check this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works. So that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. All right, this helmet of salvation. Salvation, guys, is by grace through faith. And when there is by grace through faith, we walk it out. We work. Um, salvation is a point and a process. Um, there is a have been saved reality to salvation. Have you been saved? When was the moment where you confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? This is the term justification. This is where we get the righteousness. We're clothed in the righteousness of God. But then there is the process, the our being saved sanctification. I believe that as Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, most of the challenge that's being given here with the armor of God is in this moment of salvation. This is the working out of our salvation. This is becoming more like Christ through hard work and through, um, because of the grace, um, mission for Christ. So this is the working out, the our being saved. Listen, the helmet of grace, as we want to call it, 
as we are working out our salvation, as we are being saved, when we pick up, Paul says, look, you were first justified and you received salvation. But then you start to try and walk without it. I really want to encourage you. Would you take up once again this grace? And would you equip yourself? Would you put on this helmet of grace? Because when you put on this helmet of grace, you stand firm, listen to me, in what Christ has already done. You stand firm in the victory that he provided for you through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You begin when you put the helmet of salvation on, even though you might be doubting, even though you might be struggling, even though this life of being saved, you're not perfectly saved, there's no glorification yet, you're being sanctified, you're ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. You put on this helmet of salvation, this helmet of grace, so that you can reflect on what Christ has done for you. When you do that, I want you to know, you remember this truth that there is absolutely nothing that God is ever going to do as you live for him and in the future that he hasn't already done for you. Because we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. See this helmet of salvation. Paul's like, put it on. Take it up. What are you thinking? Trying to operate according to your knowledge. No, you need the knowledge of Christ. And you need this reminder. The peace, the joy, the kindness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, the self-control, the fruits of the Spirit. When you put this on, you recognize, I already got it. Taken up the helmet of salvation. So, all right, I got three things. Y'all know I like three points. So you want to write these down. Take up the helmet of grace. And when you take up the helmet of grace, it provides three things for you. Number one, confidence. When you take up the helmet of salvation, confidence. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, look at it. Let us then with confidence. Everybody say confidence. Confidence. Now say it confidently. Confidence. Confidence. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us then with confidence draw near, check this, to the throne of what? Grace. We put on that helmet of grace, we get confidence. And we draw near to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Y'all know I got a football illustration just about every single week because I'm that dad loving all my boys playing football right now and we're in the middle of football season. So I started to think about this. Like, um, do you know that um, much like in a football game, um, especially in the pros, we're not at that level right now with my third and fourth graders, but um, in the pros, in the NFL, uh, Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, they put on their helmet. And in their helmet is a speaker. And who's speaking to them? Usually the head coach or the offensive coordinator. And a lot of times, whether it's the head coach on the sideline or his offensive coaches, they're up in a booth. They're up in a box. And they're seeing the plays. They're seeing the personnel checking in and out of the game. They're anticipating defensive strategies and and what the opponent might be doing against the quarterback. And so the quarterback puts on his helmet to receive a play that's going to win the game. I want you to know that our God is sitting high. And a lot of times we reject this helmet. We reject this word, this wisdom, this truth that we need in order to accomplish. And God is seeing things that you and I can't see. And when we try and operate with our lack of vision because we're down on the field and we can't see that there's a a blitz that's going to come or we can't see that our opponents lined up in this way, interceptions happen, losses happen. But if we put on this helmet of salvation, I want you to know when God starts to pour out 
his playbook on us. We begin to recognize that this helmet is the actual right play that we need to run. Listen, we need the right program and play in order to accomplish what God has called us to accomplish. If we think wrong, we're going to be wrong. And so put on this helmet of salvation and receive confidence. Not in ourselves, but in Christ and what he's calling us to do. Number two, not just confidence, we receive power. The helmet of salvation, this helmet of grace, provides power. Check out another passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 through 10. It says, but he said to me, my grace, remember this is a, a helmet of grace, my grace is sufficient for you, for my Power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with my weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Last week, we looked at Romans chapter 1, verse 16, and we talked about the power of God. I want you to consider this helmet again, this helmet of grace. This helmet is like plugging into a power source. I've got my, my iPad here. It's on the you know uh, podium here with me, and right now it actually says I have 21% left. Eventually, if I don't plug in this iPad, it dies. <laughs> it will not exist anymore. It will not function. It'll just be dead, okay? In order for this iPad to charge back up and do everything that it's capable of doing, I have to get a cord and make sure it's connected to the iPad, and then I have to connect that cord and plug it into an outlet that is connected to a power source that's greater than what is in this iPad. Y'all with me? If we right now are lacking, if we are struggling, I want to encourage you to plug it in, to take up the helmet of salvation, this helmet of grace. You need the power of God right now. This is a power source that's way greater than you can ever do for yourself. When we take up this helmet of grace, we connect in. And how do we connect in? Faith. Faith is how we tap into grace. And so when we place our faith and trust in the Lord, we are taking up the helmet of salvation. And as we're plugging in, right, we begin to receive the power of God. We need this power. Now just think about it. Most people don't get this power because most people aren't plugging into grace. They're not plugging into their salvation in Christ. They're, they're plugging into themselves. They're plugging into their traditions. They're plugging into their politics. They're plugging into the things of this world. And those things, that power won't last. Isn't it great to know that when we are weak, if we plugged in to Christ, then we can be strong? For God's power is made perfect in our weakness. But number three, and we close with this, not only the helmet of grace provides confidence, provides power, but in the third place, it provides inspiration. It provides inspiration. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, Paul says, I am what I am. <laughs> Paul never, ever got over the grace of God. How about you? He goes on, he says, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though when I worked, it was not I, it was the grace of God that is with me. Paul's basically saying, look, 
the only reason why I'm here. Preaching to you about the armor of God is because of the grace of God. It's not because of me. It's not because of anything that I earned, anything that I did. At Vintage, we don't preach religion. We actually, when we share the gospel, we say this, you can't do it, but Jesus did. And because Jesus did, now you can. Paul here says, I am what I am because of the grace of God. And, and then he kind of confronts people about grace because a lot of people would say, oh, grace, well, that means I get a free pass or that means I can just sit back and consume. And, and Paul's like, are you crazy? <laughs> are you crazy? Listen, when you've been loved much, you love much. And Paul's like, man, I've been loved so much by the grace of Jesus. He forgave me even when I was killing his followers. He forgave me. He loved me. He gave me a new identity. Are you serious? You're going to sit back and do nothing? Man, I'm so fired up. And so Paul says, because of that grace, I'm inspired to work. But then he stops there and he goes, but hey, I just want you to know that as I'm inspired to go and work, anything that I do, it's his grace. It's not about me. It's like a grace sandwich. There's grace before. There's grace within. There's grace after. The helmet of grace. So in closing, let me first of all talk to you, Christian. <laughs> As Paul told the church, what are you doing? Are you really trying to live without this helmet of salvation? Take it up. So Christian, take it up. Confess that you've been trying to live for Jesus without Jesus. Take it up. And in the name of Jesus, I, I just ask through the power of the Holy Spirit that right now that this helmet of grace would provide for you confidence, power, and inspiration. For those of you who've never experienced this grace, I shared with you as we began today, for by grace through faith, you can have this helmet of salvation. So confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. God's word says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is an amazing grace. He loves you so much. And he offers to you eternal life. Trust in Jesus. Look, I know this season right now, we are tired. We are fearful. We are hurting. There's so much chaos happening in the world. I don't know about you, but right now, I'm going to take up this helmet of salvation. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to fasten this strap. I'm going to stand tall. And I'm going to anticipate God and his confidence, God and his power, God and his inspiration. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this reminder from your word today of your grace. God, I pray that right now we would stop. I'm just right now thinking about, God, my salvation and the way in which you saved me. I am what I am, but by the grace of God. Thank you for that reminder today. God, remind us. Remind us of your grace. And provide for us confidence, power, and inspiration to love you, to love people this week. In Jesus' name, we pray.
Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so thankful for all the different things that God's doing in and through our church. It's been really cool to continue this series. I, I kind of feel like I, I, I could preach on the armor of God for like three years. I could just keep going with this. God gave me two special messages this past week on the shield of faith that I'm like, oh man, I should do a three-week series on the shield of faith. But we're going to keep going. Remember to keep processing these things with our V groups and we want to keep growing in the word. You can find all of our armor resources together. Let's keep growing in the word. Hey, this Friday night, uh, we've been having some hangouts together. We had a ladies night. We had a men's night. Now we're going to have a date night. And two of my favorite people in all the world, Brian and Kristen Devereaux, are going to serve as our hosts. It's going to be at our PGH City location. Y'all check out this video and let's get ready to have some fun with our date night together. Do you want to go on a date? Who, me? Always you. But I mean you. You should go on a date. Let's do it. Well, we're hosting a date night. Check it out. November 13th, 7 p.m. at the city location. Yeah. We are going to host a date night. Yeah, we are. There's going to be romance in the city. There's going to be <laughs> games. And wait for it. There's going to be child care. So we will see you all there. See ya. Yo, Vintage family, thanks for tuning in today. Y'all, we are so pumped about this date night that my wife and I get to host, guys. We are so pumped about marriage ministry, and we're so pumped to bring dates to Vintage Church with all of our couples here. Hey, guys, it is going to be tons of fun. All you need to know is that your kids will be cared for, and the rest is a surprise. So come join us at the city location this coming Friday, November 13th, 7 p.m. We will see you guys there. And, hey, that number that Rob mentioned um, at the beginning – um, 31996. If you texted the word Vintage Church to that, you are going to get a list of links. And the first one is going to be register. I just want to encourage you again um, just to register with us just so that we can connect with you and you can connect with us. One of the links you got is Next Steps. We believe here at Vintage Church, we are very passionate um, about wherever you are in your faith journey, about you taking a next step here at Vintage. Um, so again, if you haven't texted it yet, just Vintage Church to 31996. We really are enthusiastic about you guys doing that. And there are three ways to give in this season. If you look behind me, you got the at the gathering. If you're here in the building, we got a way for you to give here. If you're checking us out online, you can go ahead and give online right at our website. You can also mail it in. And the, the address is right here on the screen. And we just want to let you guys know that it's your faithful giving that allows us to continue to go out into Pittsburgh and be love in the community. Just be the hands and feet of Jesus out there. So we would just want to thank you again and encourage you to continue with your generous giving. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this week. You're family. So let's pray and then let's go out and be Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you just empower this, this body. You empower the people that tune in every week, God, and you empower the people that are tuning in for the first week, first time, Lord, that you would empower them to live the gospel, serve our beloved city, and be the church, Lord, and we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.